communicating the performance standards, ensuring standards set are easily achievable, not a. the step. A A compound comp comparing with the benchmark. B um, madam. Sir, B. I'll I'll just C. repeat the C. question here. Which of the following is not a step in evaluation? In evaluation, we actually have the standard. And then we compare the actual performance of the employee with the standard. And then we come to a conclusion whether his performance is favorable or not. Okay. So here comparing with benchmark, is it the evaluation process? Benchmark is something, the standard, which will be set to compare the actual performance of the employee and to analyze what the performance is. Favorable or unfavorable, okay? So comparing with benchmark, setting performance standard, communicating the performance standard and ensuring standard sets are easily achievable. D, madam. D, D. madam. Yes, nobody will uh, set these standards to be easily achievable. Okay. The next question here is, which of the following is not a current method of performance appraisal? Hope you remember. I uh, discussed about there are uh, traditional methods of performance appraisal and the current method of performance appraisal. So which is not a current method? Post distribution, assessment center, management by objective, human asset accounting method. A, yeah, madam. A, A. A. A is the traditional method of performance appraisal. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, then we'll uh, answers are uh, mentioned here. Then we'll move ahead with a few uh, other questions. Which one of the following attributes of a HR professional will be classified as managerial? Imaginative and creative, friendly, sociable, and affable, interest in learning new things, organizing ability. Managerial. Uh, I hope you remember we discussed managerial knowledgeable skills friendly social level and up, up B, B. Uh, managerial B. sir if the manager is so B. friendly B. social level and all how will he B. have B. organizational B. ability B. organizing ability okay then the four I hope you remember johari window we have four windows in johari window concept for uh, self appraisal First option is open, close, semi open, and semi closed. Madam, Arena blind, closed, and dark. B. Yes, B. perfect. Sorry, B. Yeah, good. Uh, performance appraisal and performance management system can be for deciding promotion, salary increase, and evaluating employee training, coaching, and developmental needs as an employee empowering tool, conducting SWOT analysis, controlling attrition. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Then uh, fourth question is employee feedback is an essential tool for management in understanding the aspiration of employees with regards to their compensation package, understanding what employees feel about the way the business is being managed, starting climate surveys, all of the above. All of the above. All of the above, madam. The above. Yes. The performance of average performers can be improved by rotation and job transfer to another amenable location, sending for special skill upgradation training programs, okay, imposing punishment. Okay, how, okay. Will, how will you improve the performance of average performer? Three. Three. Three, Three, Three. Yes. So how Option will you three. rotate three. him three. for the job? Yes, C is the answer, sending for special skill upgradation training programs. Okay, um, I have a few more questions. Well, maybe it has been shared. I don't know how many of you have gone through.
Uh, is the screen visible, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just a minute. We have discussed few uh, during the sessions. So I'll start with from where we have to. Yes. So a personal plan. Amen. Candidate supply of outside candidates that Sir, am I audible? Uh, yes, in, in, in between our voice is breaking, but it is not coming in between. Okay, sir. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Is it clear, sir, now? No, your screen is not there now. Okay, I share it again. Now it is coming. Okay. Thank you, sir. So I was just asking a question. A personal plan requires forecast of personal needs, supply of inside candidates, supply of outside candidates, all of the above. All of the above. All of the above. All of the above. Against she. Madam, your Hello. sound is coming, not coming. Sana, madam. Oh, okay, sir. Sir, I'll just take two minutes. I'll come back. I'll join again. Uh, sir, I hope it's uh, stable now. It is okay. Continue, madam. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, I was asking this question. So the answer for this is participants. Uh, D, all of the above. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All of the above, ma'am. Then, um, which is the process of forecasting an organization's future demand for and supply of the right type of people in the right number? Which is the process? Is it a human resource planning, recruitment, human resource management, or human capital management? Uh, C, ma'am, HRM. Are you sure, sir? It's a forecasting. B, madam. B, recruitment. Forecasting. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can name uh, any synonym of forecasting, will be planning. planning. Planning, yes. So the answer is there itself. If you're planning for your employees from where to get what should be the source and what should be the number, this job description, job specification. So it comes under human resource planning. Then human resource planning facilitates international expansion strategies. With the human resource planning, uh, can the company go for a uh, global level? Can they expand at international level? No, oh, madam. False. False. Okay. Anybody who have the contrast answer for this? Doesn't no, they require human resource planning for uh, yes, your international oh. expansion strategy? Even there, they require oh. human resources. Correct. Okay. Then... You have to rearrange the following steps involved in the human resource planning process in proper order. These are the steps where you have to arrange in the proper order. This is human resource planning steps. Okay. I'll just give you a simple hint here. 
how you will be having four options to be selected there okay uh, out of which one will be the answer so what you have to do is you just check which could be your uh, starting point okay either it could be a c or i okay so suppose if your answer is i then you can go ahead and check with the another step but suppose if your uh, answer for starting point is c or a then uh, you can select that a particular option no need of spending much time there so now uh, see these are the human resource planning steps you can check uh, whether a will be the first step in this hr programming or else c environmental scanning the scanning will be done uh, to know how, how much of the human resource available then in that scanning you can actually predict what number of employees are required what qualification of people experience people you require the participants kindly mute okay so or else i i will be the shortage or recruitment and selection so anybody madam b, b. d uh, ma'am i just want c, to ask c. you whether it will start with shortage of recruitments and selection the very first step in human resource planning shortage b madam b yes correct b will be like they first go ahead with environmental scanning okay what number of employees are required uh, what could be the source from where they get the candidates so first step will be they go with ahead with the scanning then they go ahead with uh, what is the objective and policies of the company mission and vision of the company to be achieved in the future so all uh, then later all the steps will be followed so as i told you kindly uh, check which are the answers provided to you and uh, which you can uh, mention in the first step and that could be your answer so here the answer is b usage of internet for training employees of an organization is classified as uh, compression training e learning e outsource e learning okay then most flexible type of training in which employees are trained while performing task and responsibilities associated with job is classified as on job informal training. formal on job off job c on job on job yes. training yes on job Perfect. training yes thank you which is not a method of performance appraisal straight ranking comparison checklist none of the above c madam sorry c checklist checklist method checklist we discussed b, b madam b. weighted simple checklist b weighted yeah b, b. if you b, say b, b we have paired comparison yes sometimes instead of all of the above you will be having the answer none of the above as well okay so the answer is none of the above here then next question is feedback and counseling involves discuss steps which the employees can take for improvement provide support give critical and supporting feedback all of the above all of the above all of the above yes so which one is quality of type b personality restless impatient multitasker more relaxed b madam more, more relaxed. relaxed more relaxed more relaxed more relaxed okay a person's behavior depends on his inherent qualities is according to psychoanalytical theory trait theory self concept theory trait theory trait theory trait theory, trait theory. Trait theory. Right. Trait theory. what occupation does the social type of person select mechanic economist teacher social teacher. type teacher teacher madam teacher teacher madam teacher, teacher. teacher. okay who is the father of scientific management taylor 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 elton mayo frederick taylor frederick taylor somebody answer elton mayo no no so is the father of uh, hrd one of the father So the father of scientific management is F. W. Taylor. F. W. Taylor. Yes. Hasbrook two-factor theory is conducted research on engineers and accountants, doctors and engineers, accountants and lawyers. Engineers and accountants. Engineers and accountants. Yes. 
uh, which are the motivational factors recognition advancement responsibility all of the above all of the above all of the above yes so i hope you remember in this we discussed there are few factors uh, presence of which will not be the factor of motivation but which could lead to a demotivation as well and there are some factors which could be of presence of which will be a demotivation but the absence of which will not be a motivation hope you remember uh, these two concepts then curious personality can be considered as which type of person realistic social investigate 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 personality investigate. will yes if an employee promoted uh, he may fail to perform new responsibility it is considered as role stagnation ambiguity overloaded all of the above role stagnation stagnation correct sir i have explained you ambiguity is when uh, your seniors will be expecting you for performing certain role but if you don't stand on their expectation that is ambiguity overloaded is when uh, two or more responsibilities is being given for an employee then he may not perform one particular role uh, as per the standard so that is role overload stagnation is when uh, you yourself feel like you are not uh, performing your job well okay as if you have been promoted to a higher level so role stagnation is the answer climate survey depends on responsibility support risk all of the above climate survey they conduct all of the above all of the above madam yes they will get to know climate survey is they study the complete environment of the organization uh it's about responsibilities or support warmth risk everything so it's all of the above modern method of performance appraisal is assessment center workshop free form essay method straight ranking method none of the above assessment center and assessment center yes all these are uh, other two are traditional methods then a good compensation package covered under which theory market situation adequacy of wages company objectives b b yes b adequacy of wages theory it will cover the compensation package meaning of counseling that is to counsel um is to advise to suggest to consult to advise yes. to advise to advise okay information technology is a merger of two technologies uh, communication and conversation communication and computer communication and uh, company e communication and company yes uh, which one of the following is not a disadvantage of e learning sense of isolation costly privacy personal reinforcement which is not a disadvantage that means you have to answer which is the advantage here D ma'am personal reinforcement D D ma'am in e learning you will be having all are actually advantages of e learning no no personal reinforcement sense of isolation sense of isolation or uh, will it be an advantage that you feel isolated i mean you are been alone you don't have anything to be discussed yes e learning advantages privacy. you can privacy. find a privacy yes privacy. all the videos will be uploaded uh, if suppose you are not finding a time you are getting disturbed while attending the class so you can go through the recording in the privacy so advantage of e learning will be you will be on privacy counseling process consists of how many stages five madam Five, three, three, yes, yes. Madam, what is the answer three. for the last question? Privacy. Privacy, yes. Okay. Then behaviorally anchored rating scale is on the basis of situation, work, job. In the previous question, stages. This one, sir. Counseling process. Yes, madam. Yeah, three stages, sir. So First, the counselor will uh, collect the information. 
whether do you really need the counseling second is what's the problem for you okay why your uh, performance is average in the third stage they will be giving you the alternative solutions whichever suits best you can adopt and solve your problem three stages thank you a behaviorally anchored rating scale is on the basis of situation work job situation 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 correct situation. perfect information age refers to the era of development of computer system era of automated business operations era of development of software systems or era of use of information for decision making d d d, d. d. yes exactly d uh, they use all the information for decision making okay so i had only few questions so if you have any questions now or uh, based on the topics you can ask me i will share one question yes sir so that's a very useful tool for determining why employees are leaving an organization in a chamber subject in the benchmark which are important b x interviews B exit interviews. Sir, exit in useful tool. Why employees are leaving an organization is exit interviews. They'll be collecting the feedback from the employees, the reason behind why they are leaving the organization, and they take appropriate decision. Answer is B. Yes. Their managers play a vital. Manu, who is presenting this now? Yeah, sir, yeah, no, no. Okay, sir, okay, fine. Two questions, only two questions. HR managers play vital role. In... Okay, okay. Uh, sir, formulating strategies is the answer here. Okay. HR Thank manager you. will not be involved in production, not be in financial statements or uh, nor the report for shareholders. So so they go questions. ahead with formulating strategies. Yeah. The two questions are uh, recollected questions. That's why I put them down. Okay, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. If any question okay, is there, you can uh, uh, ask. Uh, uh, not from HR. If, if HR questions are there, you can ask right now. And uh, uh, otherwise, you can go to other uh, topics also. Sir, exam in a form by probability table in a condo, I'm but you. Uh, uh, you can call me after this session, I will check up. Okay. Okay, sir. So, I hope that all of you are. Preparing well so that any point from this ABM, all the four modules, mainly from uh, module uh, B, C, and D, you can start, please. Otherwise, now this will one sided. Ravindra sir, from credit to one question has come. Uh, Ravindra sir, do you want to answer that or should I? Yeah, yeah. No, I e e OQ, e OQ. Yeah, 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 I can, I can answer. Yes, sir, sir, sir please. Because I have uh, not done one question also for the participants. Okay. <laughs> from this. So actually, a very good question. It is regarding LC limit, uh, limit based assessment. How in uh, banks in Niagara practical situation, the LC limit are being fixed? There are two ways. One is simply we can fix the limit. If there is no economic order quantity, we can take the usance and lead time as the total period, total period covered for one LC. So the, it, the calculation is very easy. But here, when there is a question of economic order quantity, each LC should be both that particular economic order quantity. That means the customer, that is the buyer, can place an order with a minimum amount of this economic order quantity. I can cite an example. You can also take it down now. 
just we can uh, with that example i can explain it uh, in an easy way it will be understandable for you take it down the question is like this in a particular unit the total raw material consumption in a year is 15 lakhs one five 15 lakhs is the total annual raw material consumption that is the first step okay now the economic order quantity that means the minimum quantity that should be ordered at any point of time is 2.50 lakhs 2.50 lakhs the use and period allowed under the lc that is the buyer is opening an lc in consultation with the seller and the seller is now agreed to give time for payment that is known as use and the use and period allowed by the seller to the buyer in this case is 90 days 90 days. The lead time, the lead time is 30 days, 3 0. So we can presume this as 90 plus 30, 120 means it is almost equivalent to 4 months. Now, with this example, we will calculate the MC limit required for this particular borrower. Okay. So whenever there is a question based on EOQ for calculating LC. Three steps are important. Remember these three steps. First step, write it in your notebook. First step, you have to find out number of LCs required in a year. How many number of LCs are required in a year? How we can find it out? In a year, total consumption is 15 lakhs and at any point of time, minimum quantity ordered can be 2.52 lakhs. That means number of LC Excel. means how you got it? 15 lakhs divided by 2.50 lakhs. That means the total consumption or purchase divided by economic order quantity. That is the first step. Total material consumption divided by economic order quantity. So we, here we got 6 lakhs. 15 lakhs divided by 2.50 lakhs equals, sorry, 6, six LCs. Okay. Now the second step. Second step is you have to find out the frequency. Once in how many months one particular LC to be opened based on this. Because in a, in a year they require 6 LCs. That means once in how many months one LC has to be opened? 2 months, sir. How you got it? 12 divided by 12 divided by 6. So 12 is the number of months in a year and 6 is the number of LCs required for this particular borrower. So 12 divided by 6 LCs, the answer will be 2 months. That means once in 2 months, 1 LC has to be established. Now the question is, what is the total sir, time sir, taken? Yeah. yeah. Sir, I didn't understand 6 LCs. Uh, Usan period is uh, one month and uh, Usan period is 90 days, three months, and lead time one month. No, no. We have so, not. Uh, four months we have, total. No, no, no. We will come to that later. Okay. First of all, step by step, you just analyze. Thereafter, you can analyze it. Okay. Sir, I didn't step. understand uh, what uh, six Celsius. Can you repeat, please? No, six madam. Celsius. Just uh, one, madam. Sarah has uh, already told there are three steps. First step okay. is the number of LCs required. Number of LCs required is total raw materials to be purchased through LC divided by economic order quantity. That is the first step. Second okay. steps are as told, see, frequency, how many LCs to be issued that you have to see. And the number of months is 12. In a year, it is 12. 12 divided by number of LCs. That is a frequency. These two steps only are as covered till now. Sir, we'll be covering the next step. Then you have a doubt you ask. Please, yeah. sir, continue. Okay. So, frequency of the LC is once in two months, he has to open one LC. Okay. That is the second step. Answer for the second step. Now, we will move to the third step. Third step is actually how many LCs will be outstanding in a particular time. Because if the total period taken for one LC... To make the payment or retire the bills under the LC, the total period taken is 90 days usance plus 30 days uh, lead time. That means one LC will mature only after four months, completing four months. So that means once in every two months you have to open LC. 
so at any point of time more than one lc will be outstanding now we are we are going to find out how many lcs will be outstanding at any particular point of time so the third step is like this what you have to do is the total period divided by frequency of the lc that will give you the answer so the total period required uh, total period allowed under the lc is 4 months that means 90 days plus 30 days 120 days we are uh, converting it into months for easy calculation so 4 months is the total time required for retiring one bill under one lc then every 2 months he has to open one lc is it not so the frequency is 2 months 4 divided by 2 the answer will be 2 that is two lcs will be outstanding at any given point of time now it is very easy for us to calculate the limit because one lc should be minimum equal to economic order quantity economic order quantity is 2.50 lakhs so the number of lcs outstanding as per the third step is 2 2 into 2.5 the answer will be 5 lakhs so 5 lakhs is the limit which is to be fixed for the customer now you can ask question based on this any any question this is only exam only i have given so this way you have to find out is it clear eoq it is very clear sir has uh, told in a very simple way so i'll go to the next question if you don't mind uh, ravindran sir there is a question on uh, co acceptance uh, of bills so who is the seller and who is the buyer co acceptance of bill who is co accepting bank is co accepting in whose favor bank will the coy accept if he, the person is the bank's customer then only bank will uh, coy accept it who coy accept i accept the bill he is the drawee to whom the bill is drawn who is the seller seller is the drawer he maybe is an out, uh, outside india or domestic is the seller is the drawer and he has drawn a bill on a customer of the bank so the, who is the buyer customer of the bank he is the drawee the seller has drawn a bill on the customer of the bank the customer has accepted it and the bank is co accepting that is bank is giving a guarantee it is a non fund based limit credit facility working capital credit facility so the bill is drawn by another party drawn on the buyer that is the bank seller bank's customer bank is co accepting that is it clear is it clear who has asked that the buyer is bank bank's customer bank is co accepting the the customer has already accepted the, the purchaser has already accepted the bank is accepting on behalf of the customer co accepting that is giving a guarantee is it clear yes sir clear okay any uh, further question please one more question i think uh, that is for our uh, uh, khan sir one plus yeah i can i can see yeah. sir uh, uh, please sir it please went, sir. it went down yeah mr satish has asked uh, one plus r into one plus r into one plus r is equal to 1.1576 how to find r kindly explain okay so normally what happens when uh, any values we are having 1 plus r to the power cube or square and then some value has given normally we use scientific calculator to make our work easier okay so what you can do as you are having normal calculator so what i will suggest you i'll just uh, share uh, my screen one second what i'll suggest you that suppose i am writing like this suppose 1 plus r to the power cube you are having and some value is you got 1.15 something right okay fam and you are asking what should be the r value okay so what you can do here you will be having four options okay sometimes we have to work smartly you will be having four options okay maybe some some value 0.05 0.5 or 0.25 something they'll give right so what you can do either from options also you can put value and check suppose i say 1 plus 0.05 to the power cube if i do and check whether i'm getting 1.15 you can cross verify okay so if if from the option by putting r value you are getting 1.15 that 
will be your correct answer. Okay, that is one way to do. Okay, otherwise, what you have to do sometimes, like one plus r to the power cube is there. Then you have to check to get one point one five. One point one five can be cube of which number? Okay. it can be cube of which number either just for example i am writing because exact right now not calculating suppose this is the value for 1.05 to the power 3 okay so then we compare like 1 plus 0.05 uh, to the power cube right so in exponents we are having if uh, base is same uh, uh, power is same base will be same so then we compare if r value will be 0.05 so this is how we can compare and we can calculate so that is the reason i will suggest that instead of uh, going and checking that this 1.15 can be a uh, power of a cube of which number you can just work smartly and from options you can cross verify because one options will be right right one option will be correct so you can just put r value from the option and do cube of that multiply 3 times suppose for example 1.05 1.05 multiply 3 times whether if multiplying 3 times you are getting 1.15 then this r is equal to 0.05 is your correct answer got it i hope it has clarified because as you can't use a scientific calculator so this will make your work easier if you work little bit smartly thank you sir understood revendran sir there is a combined lc limit one doubt is there okay Okay, so please. Combined LC, I think the inland LC and foreign LC. Uh, that may be the doubt, I think. Maybe with the uh, usans, without usans. Maybe okay, who are Sanskrit that can they clarify? Who are Sanskrit whether it is with usans, without usans, with the UQ, all combined together. What it is domestic, foreign. Sir, inland and foreign LC. Sir. Okay, inland and foreign. Inland please. Inland and foreign LC. Okay, inland and foreign LC actually. There is no uh, difference between these two. Inland and foreign LC. Normally, the assessment will be the same uh, way only. It will differ only based on the usance or other lead time variations. Suppose in inland LC, the lead time may not be there uh, as that of in a foreign LC. Foreign LC normally 25 days to 30 days lead time will be there. But in inland LC, lead time will be very less. I will show you one example with on a PowerPoint example so that you can understand it correctly. One Okay, it's not there. Okay, I will give you an example. It is visible. The screen is visible. No, sir. No, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is starting. Yes, sir. first one suppose inland lc the total consumption this okay. 
24 lakhs, of which inland raw material or taste is 12 lakhs. Need time. Or FLC is three months. Or ILC. But here I am taking it as lead time, including users. Okay, lead time for FLC is three months, ILC is one month. Now you tell me, without this is without any economic order quantity. This is the question. Total raw material consumption is 24 lakhs, of which inland raw material purchase is estimated at 12 lakhs. That means the remaining 12 lakhs will be under uh, foreign LC. So now you tell me, how much can be sanctioned under FLC and how much can be sanctioned under yeah, ILC? Just have a guess. Here there is no economic order quantity. Or you can tell what is the total LC. Sir, foreign is three, three, sir. Three. First one is three. Total is four, sir. First one, simple. First one, because 12 lakhs is under inland purchase, raw material purchase, 12 lakhs under foreign uh, raw material, is it not? So per month consumption in each category is one lakh. That means for FNC, three months is the total period taken. For 1 lakh is the actually uh, monthly purchases would be 1 lakh. So you can multiply this with the 1 lakh so that you will get to be 3 lakhs. And for FLC, same way monthly consumption one is 1 lakh. lakh. Here it is 1 lakh. So the total limit is 1 What is the total limit then? Total LC limit is 4 lakh. Four lakh. So this way you have to answer. So if there is no economic order quantity, just calculate the monthly consumption and multiply this with the period so that you will get the answer. Clear? Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Devendra, yeah. uh, sir, there is a question on a DSCR. Can I explain that? Sir, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Debt to service coverage ratio, for what purpose banks are using it? Banks are using it when the bank is sanctioning term loan. Term loan means it is a longer period. Bank wants to know whether the customer will be able to service both the installment and the interest. So bank has to confirm that. Ideal DS uh, debt service coverage ratio is two. That means, so whatever he is purchasing, the customer is purchasing a missionary or whatever it is, he should use it, generate sufficient funds. One part he should take as a profit. The other part he has to repay the loan. That should be there. Entire amount should not be paid. Something he should have in his pocket also. So that is why we say it is ideal ratio is that uh, two, two is to one. So how the debt to service coverage ratio is calculated? Debt to service means both the installment and the interest. Unlike the retail loan where we fix EMI, equated monthly installment, which covers both the interest portion and the installment, in term loans and other things, normally we charge it separately. Installment will be fixed. Interest has to be serviced every month. That is a normal practice. So in debt to service coverage ratio, uh, what we th take the as the numerator, it is the net profit plus depreciation. Why we take a depreciation? Because it is an internal adjustment. When we charge, uh, when we charge a depreciation, we debit expenditure and credit the fixed asset. But where the money is going, we are are we giving to anybody? No, it is there in the business unit only. It is there the fund is inside. That is why when we calculate cash profit, we take net profit plus this depreciation, whatever charged. If there is a uh, intangible asset, there is an amortization. Fixed asset, it is uh, uh, depreciation. Intangible asset, there is amortization. If amortization is that also, we will add. Then we will add this uh, term loan interest. In the numerator, three items we will be having net profit plus 
this uh, depreciation if amortization is also there that also we will add plus we will have this uh, a term loan interest in the denominator we will have the term loan installment and the term loan interest that is how dscr is calculated normally bank take it when bank is sanctioning long term loans is it clear is it clear is it clear who has asked that if you yes sir okay okay uh, so uh, uh, mohan valedan sir uh, do do i say just the main points of ibc just the main yeah. point exam oriented some points uh, definitely some to one or one question can be asked okay ibc ibc it is insolvency and bankruptcy uh, code so what is insolvency it is a stress for the financial stress a company is facing a financial stress where they are not able to repay its debts and if it is not serviced it may lead to liquidation that is the insolvency bankruptcy when a customer when a, a individual or a entity is not able to make the payment he will approach the bank uh, he will approach the court and the court will declare him as an insolvent bankrupt that is bankruptcy court is were more than one act laws all the act uh, covering a particular subject or an area all are clubbed together that is the code that is insolvency and bankruptcy code so here for the exam purpose main points that you should remember there are two types that is the corporate insolvency resolution process carp and the other one uh, their uh, companies and llps are covered under carp and the other one is for the uh, uh, firms and individuals partnership firm so sole proprietorship firm and individuals for the corporates and llb a minimum due amount should be 1 crore then only the uh, anybody can initiate insolvency proceedings for others it is 1 lakh still it is 1 lakh for corporate it is 1 crore there are three types of people who can give this application one is the financial creditor that is the banks and others financial institutions who are given credit facility uh, uh, then the next one is operating creditors including the staff who are not getting salary and those persons who are given supplied goods to him and the third one is the corporate itself they can a file a case for insolvency resolution insolvency if it is not resolved then that will lead to liquidation so insolvency resolution is before liquidation if that is not happening then definitely it will lead to liquidation there is a time period allowed there are four pillars that which you have to remember question may be asked on the four pillars first pillar is insolvency professionals who will take charge of the company during the insolvency period they will do everything so there can be a cost accountant there can, there can be a chartered accountant and they have to be registered with the insolvency professional agencies the first pillar is insolvency professional the second profession is utility services like nsl national electronic governance solutions limited so you, you must have already got information if you have taken any od and other thing you should have got the because they cover all the information all the information information utilities may means they cover they take all the information everything together all the loans in given by financial institutions in india they get all the information so whenever an insolvency resolution is filed immediately all the information will be available at just one stage they don't have to go there and here every information is available the third one is the adjudicating authority adjudicating authority for the corporates it is the nclt national company law tribunal and for individuals and other it is a drt and there is an appellate authority also appellate authority in case of corporate it is nclat national company law appellate tribunal and for the uh, individuals and firms it is drat and uh, the fourth pillar is ibbi insolvency and bankruptcy board of india that is the controlling regulator for that there is a 10 member committee with a chairman three permanent uh, whole time uh, members and plus six other members including uh, member from uh, rbi and the finance ministry so these are the four pillars of uh, ibbi 
then uh, the resolution time normally it is 180 days within 180 days the resolution plan should be submitted to the adjudicating authority and the adjudicating authority can extend it by another 90 days that is maximum 270 days if within 270 days if the uh, resolution plan is not submitted and accepted then it will go to liquidation and all entered uh, time together including stay period and legal and other thing maximum 330 days not more than that and this creditors they get the full powers on that this insolvency professional they have to report to the uh, creditors committee creditors committee will be of the financial creditors if financial creditors is not there then only the operational creditors will ha have the powers so it is in uh, the, the operational creditors can also attend the meeting but only financial creditors can take a decision the majority is 66 percent the question may be coming 66 percent of the creditors committee is the majority any decision 66 percent should be there then there is a waterfall mechanism if uh, nothing is happening then it will go to liquidation there is a waterfall mechanism so who will get the first priority first priority is for the uh, liquidation charges second priority is for the secured creditor who has uh, uh, given not taken any that uh, surface act and other thing he has not taken the benefit and given the property to the liquidator and the workman the third one is the other than workman like that eight parameters are there last comes the equity shareholders and there is a fast track method also where uh, it is applicable for small companies startup companies uh, there it is 90 days plus 45 days this is the uh, main thing about uh, ibc any further doubt is there on ibc uh, i can clarify otherwise any uh, other uh, tell me sir one minute mohanan sir i could not see any questions on hrm can i leave sir uh, thank you thank you sir madam uh, now it is time for you to attend the, the meeting. yes sir okay, thank, thank you, you sir much. Yeah, I wish all the participants all the very best. Do your exams well. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'll take up in WhatsApp group. Bye, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you sir, madam. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, any doubt on any other uh, IBC? Any doubt you can ask other than that? Any doubt is there or any other credit or? Uh... Actually, uh, one question is there, but it is a very lengthy. Uh, in simple terms, uh, either Ravichandran sir or Ravindra sir can explain. A uh, credit syndication, multiple banking, consortium, explain. Uh, okay. uh, 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 actually, uh, we are expecting you to uh, uh, raise doubts specifically. So, this is vast subject, credit syndication, multiple banking, consortium. But what it is, they will be in limited words, they will explain. Please. Uh, uh, Ravindra sir, please. Okay, friends, I will share my screen so that. We can see, no, now, this is actually the uh, gist of consortium syndication and multiple banking. What is consortium? Consortium means one particular borrower, a big borrower, that means the total exposure is uh, more than certain level. Exposure norms, as per exposure norms, you may be knowing. One single bank cannot finance. In that circumstances, more than one bank, they will join together and they will a collectively finance that particular borrower. Consortium, there are some features. Common loan appraiser. That means all banks will interest this. This particular loan appraiser, they will interest this to a particular bank, a lead bank. So commonly, the lead bank will carry out the entire loan appraisal, appraisal process. Multiple banking, on the other hand, is just opposite of consortium. Here, common loan appraisal, their individual bank is appraising the loan. And in consortium, there are common set of documents. But in multiple banking, individual bank keeps their own set of documents. In consortium, one bank, which is taking the lead role, is known as the lead bank. Normally, the maximum stakeholder, that is the maximum amount, which bank has granted the maximum amount, that bank will act as the lead bank. Whereas in multiple banking, it is being carried out by individual bank. There is no lead bank concept. And in the case of consortium, normally the security, mostly the primary security will be on pari-passu basis. 
Sometimes even collateral security will be also on the basis of pari passu basis. But in multiple banking, primary security may be with the pari passu, whereas the collateral security, each bank can take their own additional security whenever they need that. Because some bank may give reduced rate of interest, the loan in a reduced rate of interest. And in that circumstance, that bank can ask for additional security. So individual bank can take their own security other than primary security. Then in the case of consortium, information should be shared among the banks compulsory. Mandatorily, they have to share the information. What kind of information they have to share? The entire details regarding the accounts of the borrower. The accounts of the borrower, they may, the borrower may have multiple accounts, non-fund based, fund based. So all details regarding the present position, everything should be shared among the banks once in a quarter. Whereas this is not mandatory in multiple banking. Nobody can compel, but banks can decide to share such things. Suppose some bank is not sharing, they cannot find fault with that bank. In consortium and multiple banking, a common feature is normally the interest rate is being decided by independent banks. Then what is the difference between these when compared to syndication? Syndication means, so normally it will apply to a big loan, term loan. Suppose a particular uh, loan has been sanctioned to a particular borrower. Just imagine one hydroelectric project. So crores of rupees are involved in starting the hydroelectric project. In those circumstances, normally bank will adopt this method. Normally the customer is actually adopting. Customer, that big borrower, he will not approach each and every bank. He will nominate one bank to syndicate the loan. He will convey all his requirements to the particular bank. And that bank, bank will take the role of syndicating the particular loan. So the act of syndication means arranging funds. So that particular bank will arrange funds with this other from other banks also. And that bank also sometimes contributes. Sometimes they can also uh, they can come out from the consortium or syndication. That is also possible. But Normally, what we are seeing in the practical syndication, the particular bank which takes the syndicating role, it will pool funds from different banks. And through that bank, the amount will be dispersed to the particular customer. So the customer is dealing with the particular bank directly. All other banks will support the other bank. So here, the credit risk is being shared by the banks according to their exposures. So that is the only peculiarity when you uh, uh, see the syndication type of advances. So syndication is nothing but arranging funds for a big borrower for a big term loan. Last paragraph, if you see this, it is a fixed period lending for project directly by the leader bank, which will be shared by participating bank according to their agreed proportion. One example I can cite for uh, better understanding of syndication. Suppose the total outlay is 1,000 crores, five member banks are there, one bank is the syndicating bank, sometimes that bank might have taken an exposure of 300 crores. So the remaining 700 crores will be shared by other banks. So that amount will be, hello, please mute. Other banks will share, other banks will contribute their share to the leader bank and the leader bank will uh, disperse the amount to the particular customer. So this is the uh, gist of uh, consortium on triple banking and syndication. And when it is needed, as per exposure norms, each bank can finance up to a certain level of their tier one capital. Tier one capital, based on the tier one capital, if it is an individual borrower, 15% they can go. If it is a group borrower, they can 20% uh, they can go for individual customers, individual borrower. Uh, not individual, single party. See, it is not a single party. That means it includes individuals, uh, sole proprietor, partnership, company, cooperatives, society, trust, uh, any type of that constitution. If it is a group type of concern, then a bank can go up to 25%. So 20% for single uh, party, 25% for group. And under single party also, there is a uh, discretion given by the Reserve Bank of India to individual individual bank, they can uh, go up to 5% extra. That means if it is warranted, a bank can go up to 25% for single party. But in the case of group, it is 25. So this is regarding consortium, syndication, and the multiple bank.
sir can i ask one question uh, in multiple banking uh, uh, in which bank has a customer to maintain their account each bank customer will open separate accounts with each bank and each bank will monitor that account separately so what about consortium and syndication consortium the monitoring will be happen individually but it is everything is imposed through the consortium leader consortium leader will uh, arrange all those things meetings he will arrange he will conduct uh, that regular meetings with the customer he will arrange for the inspection of the units all the bank will participate but in multiple banking normally each bank will do at, according to their own uh, strategy it is different it is just like a single loans uh, or individual loan we are giving to a customer consortium there is one leader bank will take all the role even though just like multiple banking all the banks member banks are maintaining individual accounts but they are reporting everything to the consortium leader bank that is one aspect sir uh, in consortium madam uh, madam whoever has asked okay when the bank is giving a loan whether the bank will maintain the account or not i am giving a loan whether it is consortium or whatever it is where the account will be maintained whether in my account my bank account or somebody some other bank's account with our bank only will maintain so yeah, each, either, bank, each bank yeah, river, but bank. only thing in consortium all the lead bank will take he will do the processing loan all those things he will do that uh, uh, security creation all those things we will do but individual bank will maintain their own account and npa concept is also depending upon the recovery in the individual banks exactly very good sir that point is most important for examination point of view np also categorization individual banks are doing according to their own history credit history good okay uh, next there is a question on a appeal from a drt to drat so don't confuse 45 days it was much earlier now it is 30 days please remember it is 30 days for appeal from drt to drat many of the books you will see it is 45 days in the earlier it was 45 days but when this ibc came insolvency and bankruptcy court came there the appellate authority adjudicating and appellate authority is there there the time given is 30 days from drt to drat nclt to nclat the same thing has been brought when uh, this filing a case against drt order appeal against drt order to drat 30 days only plus uh, additionally 50% of the amount of whatever drt has uh, given the recovery order that has to be paid and uh, which can be reduced to 25% by the drt uh, drat otherwise it is 30 days please remember that another question repeatedly somebody is asking that is what is the lc what is lc whether it can be domestic or foreign So actually the lc is only a non fund based credit limit it can be domestic as well as foreign because it is a transaction between buyer and the seller bank is the intermediary so it can be within india it can be from outside india also possible next one is tier 1 and tier 2 capital tier 1 and tier 2 capital i will explain like this very simple to understand <laughs> tier 1 and tier 2 mainly it is coming in bf form bfm it comes okay then they sell yesterday it was discussed also yes okay anyway we can map of repetition okay you have just uh, you, uh, go through this tier one easily you can understand this tier one means simply you can understand one is the equity share capital <laughs> So wherever equity share capital is there, it is tier one. Number two. Now we will ask whether preference share capital will come under tier one, because uh, then you, uh, the question will come like that, is it not? Doubt will come like that. So preference share capital only one portion will come. That is non-cumulative perpetual cumulative uh, preference shares. Perpetual non-cumulative. perpetual non cumulative preference shares that will come under tier one then all reserves all disclosed reserves all 
all disclosed results. It will come. Then the fourth one is higher premium. Higher premium account. Higher premium account in respect of the number one and number two. Higher premium account in respect of equity share capital. Higher premium in respect of perpetual non-cumulative preference share capital. So only these four points you remember, then you can very easily answer this. Any type of reserve, capital reserve, uh, general reserve, like that, pre-valuation reserve, everything will come under tier one. Now we will move to tier two. Tied to capital. Tied to capital. Whatever is not listed here. So equity share will not come. Perpetual non-cumulative preference share have come in the tire to a tire one. So the remaining part of preference share capital. Other preference share capital. That is preference shares. Share capital. Other than. Other than perpetual non cumulative preference shares, PN CPs. Number two, all disclosed reserve I have put it in my one. All provisions you can do, put it here. All provisions, general provision. So here, general provision. If it, there is a specific provision, it will not come under tire. Then comes all debt instruments. That means debt instruments. All debt instrument. All debt instrument presents debentures, bonds, etc. Subordinated debt. Those things will come under higher. And here we can add one more thing. Here under perpetual non cumulative preference share capital, we can add the debt instrument also. If it is perpetual, we can add it in tier one. So if it is perpetual, it is coming under tier one. If it is not perpetual, it will come under tier. So this is the difference between these two. Very easily you can remember it. You take down this so that any question, if they ask any provision, you put it in tier two. It should be general provision. Sometimes they will ask a bad debt provision, NPA provision, whether it will come under tier two. It will not come because it is for a specific purpose. You have to utilize for that purpose only. How can we take that as our capital? That is not possible. So this four plus three points, four plus three, seven points, if you remember, it is very easy for you to explain. Thank you. Regarding uh, uh, this NPA provision of uh, uh, the, in consortium account, already the point was covered. Still, uh, there was a doubt. Normally, we say an account uh, will be treated. It is borrower. It is borrower wise, not facility wise. Normally, we say if uh, one facility, one account becomes NPA, all the accounts will become NPA of a particular customer in a bank. But in the case of consortium, there is a different method of uh, treating IRSA norms. So it depends upon the individual bank's recovery. Is, there can be cases where one of the consortium bank has treated an account as NPA, but the other bank has treated it as standard assets. It depends upon the individual bank's recovery, not uh, uh, depending upon entire bank's consortium members' recovery. Is it clear? I put in yes, the chat box also. Yes, sir. But uh, if uh, the, how they will recover the amount uh, because here to surface they cannot initiate no, surface they can, we, we don't say it cannot be there to wait because 60% of the value of the banker's consent, then only surface is possible. Otherwise, because they will be putting in the next meeting, you know, every quarter there will be a meeting. Regularly, there will be meeting. So meeting will be called by this lead bank and all the consortium members along with the company representative will be there. So these things will be definitely discussed in the next consortium meeting. So they will take a call on that. Okay, sir. Uh, there is a question on uh, this uh, credit linked note. Can I tell the, that, uh, Ravindra, sir? Tell me, sir. Tell, sir. Okay. 
credit linked notes these are all derivatives what is a derivative something derived out of the underlying some con- something so there is a loan given by a bank to a customer this is normal thing it is not a derivative and all these products uh, this uh, uh, cre- uh, see uh, credit linked notes and all the credit swaps all these are derivatives these are as per the Inter- international standard uh, derivatives association they have put some of that it is an american association but they have put how it can be done in the case of credit swaps there will be only two parties one is the banker who sells his risk and the other person is the this just like an insurance company just like uh, uh, you take any insurance company they will insure your this whether it is national insurance or any insurance company suppose fire insurance we are insuring just like that here your credit default that is insuring not anything it fire and other thing credit uh, default it is insured by paying a premium the so bank is paying if it is uh, suppose there are 100 uh, accounts two accounts are becoming npa credit default then this person this uh, entity spv whoever it is they will give the amount to the bank that is the normal credit swaps that is the risk is uh, swapped what a bank is paying the uh, amount uh, premium the other person gives the uh, insurance on that and there are two par- two parties only in the case of credit swaps whereas in the credit of uh, credit linked notes this spv who is giving this uh, insurance from where they take the funds they sell this credit linked notes to the investors they give that suppose there are 100 uh, auto loans insured by um, say bank a they have insured 100 uh, uh, auto loans and uh, there is an spv b who has in, uh, then given the insurance if any default in 1023 or whatever it is they will give the amount so this spv will uh, raise spv is special purpose vehicle that's just like a company spv is just like a company okay they will raise funds from the common investors against this. this is a derivative they will raise the funds and whatever funds are raised that will be invested in bonds and other highly yielding uh, whatever uh, bonds and other things the ventures and whatever regular in uh, the return is coming that will be given to investors suppose this is a credit default out of the 100 auto loans two loan as uh, credit default has been uh, done so it, it the, the it, then this spv has to give the money to this uh, bank so spv will give the money to this bank from where they will take the money whatever investment made by the investors so investors will get the re, uh, remaining amount only to the once the period is over the uh, time whether it is one year or whatever it is the time is over and whatever remaining amount after paying to the bank whatever remaining the amount that will be shared to the investors and them they will be getting the whatever regular return plus the remaining amount whatever if there is no default entire amount will be they will receive along with the whatever investment they made so credit linked note there will be three parties one the banker the other person spv who insures that give protection against the credit risk and the third party is the investors is it clear credit linked notes sir it's clear sir last one when they are sharing the uh, uh, profit you told no sir when okay. means uh, okay. uh, that one okay. can you explain there are two portions but there are two portions okay so normally this insurance is taken for one year normally then uh, yes, next sir. year it will be it is renewed so it is for one year okay so this person every month they will be getting some return they will be investing in monthly return uh, schemes and other thing so whatever return is uh, they are receiving that will be shared to the investors okay that's the first part last part suppose there is an a default default uh, it will be shared by the investors the remaining they have invested there are two parts investing invested the money uh, money receiving back the other one is the interest being received okay interest uh, till that period they will get the interest and the remaining amount only if there is default to uh, uh, suppose 1 lakh is the total amount uh, done 2000 is loss and uh, this 2000 will be divided by among all the investors they will get up to less that amount only if everybody is uh, uh, giving say 100 investors 1000 rupees they will be getting 980 only because 2000 has been given to the bank 
where there yes, was sir. a credit default. Is it clear? I understand, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Ah. Okay, 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 then. Thank you, sir. Okay. Simplex table key, row key column, sir. Sir, muted, yes, sir, sir muted. Sir, you were a... Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Now, fine, sir. So in class, I have told you that in a linear programming problem, they will never ask you to solve uh, by using graphical method or simplex method, okay? So what you can remember that if you are having two or three variables, you, you will be using graphical method to solve the problems, okay? But anyhow, graph paper will not be provided, so they cannot ask the graphical questions. And if variables are more than three, five, 10 variables are there, then we use simplex method. And of course, for simplex method also, I have told you that it's very complex. If manually we solve, it takes half an hour to solve. Okay. So what they can give in linear programming problems, they can ask conceptual questions. Okay. Or they can ask questions related to identifying of equations, which I have taught you how to frame. Okay. And uh, you want to know about the key row or key column, or we say pivot column or pivot row, right? So for that table will be provided to you. They will not give equations and then they will ask you to frame the table and then they will ask you to identify. Okay. They will not do that table. They'll provide if they're asking questions related to simplex or identifying some variables from the table table, they'll provide you. Okay. So table will be uh, uh, looking like this. I'll just show you. As I said, constant variables will be there. Basic variables will be there. Solution values will be there. Okay. Then your equation variables or variables will be there. X1 or X2. Suppose two products you are having. So first one will be X1. Second one will be X2. And then I have told you that in simplex problems, we add slack variables. Okay, slack variables will be added in the simplex equation. Okay, so maybe in table, they can provide you slack variables as well. Okay, suppose two equations I'm having, two products I'm having, so two slack variables I have added, two uh, constants will be there. So two slack variables we are going to add. Okay, slack variables are just assumptions that if something will add, the values will become equal. Okay. So in questions, always uh, constant variables, they start with zero, zero. Okay, we assume that we are not producing anything. Okay, we are not uh, producing any any uh, output. Okay, so always constant variables, constant values will be zero, zero in question. Or they can put two or three, it depends, but tables will be like this only, okay? Then two variables you are having, so X1 and X2, two variables you are having. So something table will look like this some values they'll put like this 6 10 okay and here also some values will they'll give Okay, so some table they'll provide like this. Okay, so what you can do, uh, you can find out cost, like we say CJ here, if I'm representing in terms of variable, okay. So we multiply like zero into six we do, and then plus zero into 10 we do, okay. So as both variables here, both values are zero. So of course your total value will become zero only, total value will come zero, right? Zero into six plus zero into 10 will become zero only. Same thing we have to do for each variables. For X1 also, we have to do same thing. So zero into one plus zero into two, you are going to get zero only. Zero into two plus zero into one, you get zero only, again zero. But if they are going to give you any table directly, they can give any value. Maybe instead of zero, 
it will be written one and two here and full table they are going to give you so no need to worry that how we are going to get c and how how we are going to get cj value how we are going to get zj value no need to worry at all they are going to give all the values in the table just you have to identify okay so just i'm telling you from whole process so normally uh, we, how we calculate we calculate cj minus zj so this whole table value they are going to give you like 0 minus 4 minus 4 this 0 you have to subtract then 0 minus 3 so you will get minus 3 0 0 so this whole table will be given to you okay how you can identify key column i told in whole table you see which is having highest negativity either we check for highest negativity or we check for highest value okay it's not necessary that always negative value will be given instead of minus they can give plus also okay suppose they have given table like this four and three three so which is having highest value this four so this will be your key column okay uh, if, Parvez, sir, probability there is a question uh, yes sir i will just look after uh, this just one sir, if it is negative value then it will be three uh, negative means highest negativity i said so suppose uh, this is negative value I mean suppose uh, this is minus four this is minus four and this is minus three so which is having highest negativity three. minus four is three. having highest negativity right three. Isn't it? Mm. Hello. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Right. So minus four is having highest negativity. So keep both things in mind because we solve in both ways in simplest. Either we talk about highest negativity or we talk about highest value. So in table you observe which is having highest negativity. If its negative values are given, or you can look which is having highest value. So that will be your key column for key row. you have to calculate minimum key row okay this this calculations we do if they have not given how we calculate minimum key row this solution value divided by key column element okay so solution value is 6 and what is the key column element this one so 6 by 1 it will give you 6 then solution value is 10 and what is the key column element 2 so 10 by 2 is 5, right? Then you see name is minimum key row. So which is minimum value? This 5 is five. minimum value, okay? Here negative doesn't matter. Suppose, for example, I'm writing here minus 6. Then which one you will select? One is minus okay. 6 and one Min is 5. Which minus 6 is minimum value, no? Yeah, so that is the reason I said here negative value doesn't matter at all. Even okay. though it's negative, you see for minimum value. 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 Don't okay. consider signs here. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. This is the example I'm telling. So this is your minimum key row. Then you check which element is common in key column as well as key row. So which element is uh, common? This is common, no? Two is common, right? 2 is falling in key column yes, sir, as well yes, as sir. minimum key, key row, right? Yes, so this is only called as key element. Okay. So 2 is your key element. So just identification they can give you an exam, not uh, anything else uh, for solving and all, because it takes almost 20 to 30 minutes to solve. Sir, that means okay, sir, uh, for you, key sir. column, we have to take the map. Uh, for both, we have to take the lesser number only. Uh, key column, you have to take either highest negativity or highest value. As I told, it yes, depends yes, on the yes. author. We solve in both ways. Few authors, they prefer CJ minus ZJ. Few authors, they prefer ZJ minus CJ. So if I do ZJ minus CJ, it will come plus 4. If I do CJ minus ZJ, it will come minus 4. I prefer negative way. So I uh, tell, but in exam, any table they can give you, you keep in mind, either you are going to select highest negativity one or highest value one. Okay? Okay, sir. Thank you. Clear now? Okay, next question. I'll just uh, check. Sir, what kind of uh, question can we expect from uh, correlation, sir? Because solving itself takes a lot of time. Uh, 
Uh, no, see, in correlation, I have told they will ask the case studies. Okay, so sometimes what happened, they will combine it. So either they can give small questions. So I said, whenever we set questions, we always keep in mind that the uh, the student or the people who are solving the questions always should be able to solve within the given time period. So the IIBF are never going to give you such questions, which will take five, 10 minutes to solve. Okay, so what they will do, they will reduce the number of rows. If suppose they're asking you to solve you, I will reduce the number of rows. So only one, two, three items I'll put so that you will be able to solve it quickly. That is one thing. Second thing, what I will do instead of giving you um, individual values like X is 20, 30, 40, 60, then Y is 30, 40, 60 like that. Instead of giving values like that, directly I can give you value as, okay, Sigma DX device is this, Sigma, uh, X, Sigma X is this or sigma device like that. So keep in mind, sometimes I have taught you to as sigma dx dy. I have taught you sigma dx square, sigma dy square. But in exam, instead of writing dx, they can give you sigma x also. So that time, don't get confused that, okay, sir said sigma dx and they have given sigma x. Okay. So don't get confused because I said few books, authors, they prefer writing sigma x instead of sigma dx. But the values, is x minus x bar only. The x minus x bar only they are going to consider. So don't get confused in exam, even though they are writing in a, they are uh, representing in a different way. Sir, shall I share one question now in this regard? I think maybe relating to that one. Uh, which one? Sir, uh, this one, this question, this is uh, asked for the CAB examination. Uh -huh. I is, uh, I'm not sure whether this is uh, relating to correlation coefficient. This can for be... example, set 20. Can you? Ah, yes, sir. Correlation problem only. So that is what I was talking about, sir. Uh, good, you have given this question. So this is what I was talking about because I have taught you sigma dx square, right? And dx means I have taught you x minus x bar. dx means x minus x bar. So that only instead of writing x minus x bar and dx square means x minus x bar ka whole square. So instead of writing dx square, what they have written? Sigma in bracket x minus x bar will come. X minus x bar whole square they have written. So this 1500 is your sigma dx square. 800 is your sigma dy square. And sigma dx dy is how much? 1000. So can you find out correlation? Anybody can find out correlation? Sigma dx square is 1500, sigma dy square is 800, sigma dx dy is 1000. So our formula you can apply, sigma dx dy divided by square root of sigma dx square. 0 0.91, sir. 0.91? E. Okay. What about others? So you understood how they can give. So same thing, but they have written in a different way. So they're in exam, don't get confused. And if I'm asking as case study, I can add a few more Point things. Nine ones. Yeah, I can add a few more things. I can ask covariance. So covariance formula, you remember, sigma dx dy divided by n. I can ask coefficient of determination. Suppose I have to make as case study, uh, five questions, four questions I have to add along with that. So coefficient of determination formula you remember r square r square correct so this is how they will make the question so iibf whenever they set they set the question always they'll keep in mind that the student should be able to or uh, the person should be able to solve within the given period of time so they will never give you very big uh, questions like how in textbook you are seeing the macmillan textbook we are seeing some n is 10 10 numbers or 10 times some values has given so that will take more time so those kind of questions they'll not give but it will be based on that okay then uh, is it clear now clear sir okay and then about probability i think uh, one question was there after I missed. Sir, that probability chart will be given, sir. In um, see, in exam, probability chart will not be provided to you. But what they will do next to question itself, they will write Z. Z or probability value, P value or Z value. Either they will represent with P or they will represent with Z. And that value will be mentioned in the bracket 0 0.4928. 
0.2968. So that value they will mention in the question itself. So no need to worry. Uh, just one second, I'm searching uh, the question which somebody has asked. No, uh, sir, the question is uh, from interval estimation. Uh, that 95% uh, of the confidence limit is given. Mm -hmm. Then how to find Z alpha by 2? Alpha is 5%, I got it. Then how to find the Z alpha by 2? I uh, know, see, uh, in exam, what happens uh, if alpha by 2 is your Z value only we are talking about? Okay, so no need to worry. It depends on different, different books. Okay, the different, different books will represent the, uh, uh, what we call the terms differently. Okay, like suppose I have to write standard error. I'll use SE. In few books, they will refer sigma X. Have you seen? Instead of a standard error, they will write sigma X. Yes, sir. Right. So yeah. it depends different, different books. So instead of writing Z, I will write alpha by two. So that values will be given to you. If any probability values I am, I am giving you, uh, means uh, which should be seen in table and all, means I'll mention in the question itself. Otherwise, I have told you to remember three values for Z confidence level. Do you remember? If 95%, which value to take? 1.96. Yes. If 90%, uh, then which value to take? 1.64. And 99%? 2.58. So these three values don't expect in exam to give in the question paper. These val three values you should remember. And as I have told that if confidence level they are not going to give, if confidence level they are not going to give while calculation of inferences, which percentage you are going to take? Do you remember? 95. 95. Remember that. Confidence level, sometimes they will not give in question at all. So don't think that how to solve. You should take 95% and solve it. Okay. Sir, and can you once again tell, sir, which all we have to remember, sir? 90% uh, 1.64 Z value. 95% 1.96. Ninety nine percent is 2.58. So one small doubt, sir. Thank you, yes. sir. Tell me. Sir, in sampling, sir, you have given us the formula x minus x bar minus the mean of the average population divided by the standard error. That is the yes. probability, sir. What is the, actually what we are finding out, sir? That question is probability of I'm not able to get that. Yeah, that we are finding out the probability that the sample, sample which you have selected will fall between a particular uh, deviation. Like what happens when, uh, as I have told, when you are selecting a sample, chances of deviation will be there, right? Nobody can say that the sample which I have selected is 100% accurate. Can you say that? Unless you prove it statistically? Yes, sir, you cannot say it, sir. Correct. So, of course, some deviation will be there from the population. Now, population average yeah. is different and sample average is different because different. instead of population, you are selecting a part of the population. Sample. That is sample. So that is the reason formula we are going to use x bar minus mu divided by standard error or sometimes they say standard deviation also. Okay. So x bar is your sample mean, mu is your population mean. So deviation is there. And then you remember I have shown you the bell-shaped curve and I have told that the midpoint is your average. That is your zero. So what happens? The deviation will be there. So that deviation only we are finding out that how much deviation is there. For example, I have told you in class that suppose uh, the research or some research you are doing where you have to collect the sample of those employees whose salary is between 20,000 to rupees 40,000. Okay. You have to select sample of those employees whose salary is between 20,000 to 40,000. Right. So you have done the research, you have selected the sample, you have approached the people and done. But are you sure that you have selected only those people whose sample are between 20,000 to uh, whose salary is between 20,000 to 40,000? So that is what we find out the probability that what percent or what probability of sample which we have selected is falling between this category. So when you find probability, we convert into percentage and check. Like suppose it has come 74%. 
90%, 80%. So means in 90%, you are confident enough that the sample is falling between the those uh, of those employees whose salary is between 20,000 to 40,000. But suppose this probability or percentage is coming 2%, 3%, 4%, then it's not accurate, right? So again, you have to redefine your sample and you have to again work it out for selection of samples. So, so in the question they'll ask, the probability of the, the question will be that, isn't it? So I just want to know what the question will be put out as. Questions will be asked like this only, find the probability, okay? If the mean of a sample or mean is 2000, okay? And so, I told you to remember that whenever in question they ask, what is the probability that will be your X bar? Okay. For whatever value they are asking to find the probability that is your X bar. In whole question, wherever the word mean or average has written, that is your mu. Standard error formula you have to apply out of those three formulas, which I have told for infinite sigma by root n for finite do you remember sigma by root n into by root n. minus n by capital n minus one by capital n minus one and then when proportion will be given square root of p into p. q by n. n so if proportion or percentage will be given so out of this three any one formula i'll apply and calculate a standard okay so in exam if they are asking you to find the, the probability this the table value will be mentioned in the question Okay, probability table value will be mentioned in the question. If they have not mentioned whatever answer you are getting, that only will be your option will be provided. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. And uh, uh, okay. about simple probability questions, remember that whenever we are finding probability as a probability, they have not given in your uh, syllabus, uh, but uh, they have asked sometimes one question they ask. So remember that whenever they ask probability, how we calculate probability. So probability we calculate means number of favorable events divided by total number of events, okay? Whatever you are favoring, whatever events you are favoring, that you write as numerator. And whatever total events are available, that you write as denominator, okay? So suppose I say out of uh, 10, 10 students, I'm selecting one student. So what is the probability? As I said, number of favorable events divided by total number of events. So it will be one by 10, right? Mm -hmm. If I say out of 10, I'm selecting two. So two by 10, three by 10, like that. Okay. In that still further more addition, multiplication are there, but I have not seen in syllabus. So I have not taught you, but little bit, I'll just uh, explain you. So remember that whenever either or question will be there between uh, two values, two probabilities, whenever they say either or add both the probability values. Suppose one value is one by 10, other one is three by 10. So whenever either or they ask, add both the probability values. Whenever they ask and, okay, what is the probability of A and probability of B? Multiply both the probability values. So this is one simple concept which you can remember, which can help you. Still some doubts will be there. You can approach it for one step. I'll clarify. A uh, sample of 225 elements from a population with a standard deviation of 75 is selected. The sample mean is uh, 180. The 95% confidence interval for, okay. So here mu we have to calculate, okay. Uh, so remember, I have told you if they ask in questions to calculate confidence interval, inferences, parameters, all are same thing, you remember? Confidence level, inferences, parameters, estimates. Okay, anything they ask means the same thing you have to find out. So uh, sample of 225 elements. So sample size is 225. Standard deviation sigma is 75. So can you tell me which formula to apply for a standard calculation of a standard error? Can you tell me? Sigma by root n, sir. Yes, sigma by root n. So 220, uh, sigma is your standard division, 75 divided by square root of 225. So we'll get a standard error. You start, you have started Five. solving? Five, sir. Five, sir. Two values you will get. Remember x Five. bar plus z into standard error, x bar minus z into standard error. So I'm thinking you, you should be able to solve it, right? Uh, 
I just write down the formula for you so that you can recall. Uh, sir, can I share the screen one second? Yes, sir. So remember, I said whenever they give mean, okay, whenever they give mean means formula will be x bar plus z into standard error and then x bar minus z into standard error. So z value already given in the question, 95%, 1.96. But sometimes they will not give you, so be prepared for it. And then a standard error you calculate, that is 75 divided by square root of 225, right? And what was the x bar? Uh, Five. Yes, so you can solve it. Uh, sir, can you please share the question now? Uh, that question. Yeah, so now can you tell me which option? X bar is 180, remember that X bar is 180. Z is 1.96 and a standard error you can calculate 75 divided by square root of 225. So tell me which option. D, sir. Okay, D. What D, about this? Okay. So anybody is having doubt, uh, please ask and clarify if somebody is having and somebody doesn't understand. Please clarify. Okay. Don't think that others are solving and telling. So uh, it's, it's okay. But you can ask if somebody is having any doubt. So everybody understood? Okay, once more, okay. So I told whenever they ask confidence interval. So remember that confidence interval estimates inferences parameters. Okay, four things I'm telling, four terms I'm telling, parameters, inferences, okay, estimates, confidence interval. This all four terms are same thing. So don't get confused in exam. Okay, two formulas I have told you. One, first formula when they give X bar. Okay, so here uh, mean they have given. So average mean they have given. So when they have given average mean as 180 here in the question, it means I'll use formula X bar plus Z into standard error and X bar minus Z into standard error I'm going to use. If instead of X bar 180, they will give P 0 0.4, okay? So remember that if they give P, we'll be using P plus Z into standard error, P minus Z into standard error, okay? As they have given average, uh, sample average. So that's why I'm using X bar plus Z into standard error. Sir, Z can you one the value they have given, standard error you can calculate by using either finite, infinite or proportion formula. Sir, can you one solve the same thing, sir? With the... You want me to solve the same thing? Okay. So, uh, see, this is the formula for a standard error, right? Sigma by root n, if you remember, because here population is infinite. We don't know what is the size of the population. So your sigma is 75. Standard deviation is 75. Sample size is 225. So 75 divided by square root of 225. How much you got? Can somebody tell me? Five. Five, sir. Five. You got five. So five, standard sir. error, you got five. Z value 1.96, 95% confidence level means 1.96, 90% means 1.64, 99% means 2.58. These three values you remember. If they have given in the question, good. If they have not given in the question, you should remember these three values. Okay. Then X bar, they said upper confidence limit or uh, X bar, they have said 180, right? So 180, you put Z, you can put 1.96 and Standard error is 5. Lower confidence limit means 180 minus 1.96 into 5. And remember always board mass rule. First multiply, then add. First multiply, then subtract. Clear now? Clear, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Devijandra, sir. 
uh, there is a question on uh, investment uh, taking investment decisions uh, npv irr payback uh, uh, bcr ar and bp that is very lengthy no sir <laughs> uh, just main points sir main points sir, uh, sir one minute uh, uh, from uh, this uh, i think uh, parvez sir will be available up to 6 o'clock only okay uh, is, is it so sir parvez sir yes sir no see vijay told me that you will be available up to 6 o'clock only yes sir yes sir so any more question from this uh, uh, module uh, b business maths is there you can ask now then we will go to credit uh, credit area if anything is there otherwise yeah, any questions uh, any pardon Uh, any sir, questions any doubt you can ask uh, sir in sampling if they have not given uh, means only probability is given and sampling we have to mean sample number of samples we have to find out means sample size right yes 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 sir yeah, yeah. so there what you have to do again same formula you have to use it okay like uh, take for example Like take for example, suppose I say z is equal to x bar minus mu divided by standard error, right? This is our formula which we remember. So when they ask sample size, then what they will do? Z value they will provide to you. Okay, yes, z sir. value something they'll give one point nine six or two point five bit some value they'll put it. Hmm. X bar value also uh, I'll just put some values and I'll show you. So suppose one point nine six I have put. Z value is somewhere thirty-five and mu value is thirty. Then what you can do? This sigma by standard error means I'll use this sigma by root ten. So this also they are going to give the values. Uh, sigma value also they are going to give you. Like suppose for yeah. example twenty. But they are not giving the n value. Ha ha ha. So normally how we calculate? So this will go up, right? so this will go up and you will solve it okay you okay. try the simplification we have to do ha huh. and suppose this side is square root is coming means how suppose just for example i am writing it suppose you are having 5 and this said you are having root n so how you will remove root Square, the, squaring on ah, both squaring sides. both sides. Remember that squaring both sides. So n be, will be equal to twenty five. So just example I am telling. So whole thing you have to solve in same way. In ending you will get some value like this. Five is uh, five is equal to root n or twenty is equal to root n. So square both sides you will get the n values. Ah, uh, sir, another But, doubt regarding normal distribution graph, sir. Ha uh ha. -huh. uh there is a mean uh, mean value something 90 and uh, i forgot and there is one question in macmillan sir i'll i'll drop in whatsapp sir ha no problem if something is there any time you can drop yeah, on yeah uh, in that graph actually i was not able to understand the Fine, graph you can you can drop that question i will just clarify and one more thing i'll tell you that yes, suppose sir. in exam now I, i said uh, in beginning that sometimes you have to work smartly suppose some sample size uh, they have given some option they have given so what you can do directly you can put here five value and yeah, yeah. solve this if you are getting 1.96 that is my n value okay, so you can okay. approach indirectly also instead of go directly going directly and wasting time and then squaring and finding root you can just put yes, the yes. values and see whether i am getting 1.96 means that is my n value clear yes yes Okay. okay sir Sir, what kind of uh, theory questions will be asked, sir, in business mathematics? Uh, see, here in business mathematics, they can ask conceptual questions. As I am telling, they can ask related to simulations. They can ask related to a time series. They can ask related to a linear programming. Okay, then some sampling related question they'll ask theory because I have uh, taught you uh, sampling methods, right? What is the uh, Uh, standard deviation types of sampling methods and also sampling related questions they can ask correlation so you have to be uh, thorough with your basics the concepts 
okay and sometimes what happen in time series linear programming simulation because the solution is so big or sometimes when we are finding objective questions is quite difficult so what iibf they will prefer they will prefer giving some theory conceptual questions from time series linear programming and simulation instead of giving some problems and uh, some big problems and case studies is there one doubt here in the problem it is that we have to find out mu only uh, ma'am your voice is not clear can you hear me sir yes tell me can you speak a little bit louder ha uh -huh. in the in the same problem it is told we have to find out mu value of mu then why can't we use the formula that uh, probability equal to sample mean minus mu by standard error Why you can you can upper... use this you can use same formula whichever formula you are applying if mm -hmm. all values are given except one value you can use formula any formula you can use that is not a problem if you have to find out mu but in previous questions they have asked confidence interval okay in previous question they have asked confidence interval okay. and you will see in options they have given two values so okay. do you remember what i have told you when for which thing you are going to get two values estimates inferences parameters confidence level this four are same thing for this only we are going to get two values two values okay second okay. upper and one lower what does linear programming involves in a scenario where the decision maker is required to maximize some linear objective function so do you remember i have taught you that what are the objectives of linear pro programming problems right what are the objectives do you remember Do you remember the objectives of linear programming? Anybody remember? Yeah, the we yes, have to maximize our profit, minimize the cost, minimize our cost, right? And always we have to do in an optimal way, right? I have given an example also, right? Optimal way. So allocation of uh well, first option is allocation of unlimited resources to limited demands in a quick fashion uh rationing of limited resources among unlimited seekers on first serve basis providing an acceptable platform for amicable distribution of resources among competing demand without regards to consequences allocation of limited resource resources among competing demands in an optimal way right so linear programming uh, we take decisions that always it should be in an optimal way so it will be d right yes correct yes sir okay, just one example theory type questions they just i saw so thank you parvez sir thank you very much yeah thank you so much if still some doubt is there you can uh, post in whatsapp suppose in case i am not uh, able to reply in group you can post personally also to me okay so i can clarify no issues okay thank you everyone uh, all the best keep asking the doubts before exams clarify go with confidence okay believe in yourself okay thank you all thank you everyone okay thank you sir thank you sir okay this uh, investment decision uh, i will just give in uh, one word just just like that devendra sir instead of uh, spending uh, time just like that okay uh, what's the time value of money time value of money is converting the future cash flows into present value that is the uh, time value of money uh, this present value is future value divided by 1 plus r into n that is the calculation so first one is the net present value net is the difference net present value is the difference that is the net between the present value of future all cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows and uh, if the npv is uh, positive then you have to accept if it is negative then don't accept so there should be surplus net should be there then only ac accept otherwise don't accept then there is some rate is given so the already the rate is given in npv but in irr we have to find out the rate suppose he has to spend 10% for this investment he should get the minimum that return that is that converting that future cash inflows into the present value and if he is getting that then only he has to invest otherwise he will not invest
if irr is higher than the cost of investment if 10% is what he is investing and uh, his return at the present value is more than 10 then only he has to invest if, if it is less than uh, that whatever the rate he is spending on investment he should not accept that payback method it does not take into account the time value payback method does not uh, take into account the time value of money it just takes into account within how many years whatever investment he has made that will be coming back to him that is uh, take, uh, calculated by payback method it is a time period so what is the shortest period if there are three uh, investment option one is three and a half uh, years he is getting back another four year and a third uh, the other one is four and a half he is getting back within three and a half years so that uh, he has to uh, accept that one uh, negative point about the payback method is the remaining period whatever he, he is going to get that will not be taken into account and time value also will not be taken into account wherever he is getting the shortest period uh, the refund the return he has to accept then the other one is the cost benefit ratio or which we call it bcr benefit cost ratio so all the present value of the benefit cash inflows and the uh, present value of the cost will be taken and the ratio the, these uh, this present value of benefit divided by the present value of cost that is the investment cost if the bcr is above one it has to be accepted if it is less than one it has to be rejected Average rate of return takes into account the average, tot average will be taken, whatever the total period, whatever in, uh, return is there and the investment, all the average, yearly average will be taken, average annual net profit divided by average investment. So here also the time value of uh, uh, is not taken. In both the cases, uh, this uh, buy, uh, payback and this uh, average return, the time value is not taken. Uh, a break-even point is where there is no loss, no profit. There is no loss, no profit. How to calculate the break-even point? That is a fixed cost divided by contribution. What is contribution? Selling price minus variable cost. In every any product you are manufacturing, there is some fixed Fixed cost which will not change and a variable cost like that uh, your uh, raw material cost and other thing which will care, uh, which will change contribution is the difference between the selling price and the variable cost and the uh, BEP in sales that is calculated by fixed cost divided by PV ratio profit to volume ratio profit volume ratio is contribution divided by sales into hundred so uh, if it is BEP is lower that is always better. So if it is very higher, first you have to reach that stage, then only you will start a profit. Up to the break-even point, you are not uh, generating any pro uh, profit. Only after that, you are generating profit. So if it is very high, it is dangerous. It should be lower only. Then margin of safety is the difference between the actual sales. What is the actual sales and what is the break-even point sales? That is the margin of safety. If the margin of safety is much higher, that is better always for the uh, company. So if you want to add anything, sir, uh, Rivendra, sir. Uh, no, sir, because here this, all these things which you have covered already, there is a possibility that uh, some uh, MCQs will come based on this. So each sentence is most important. I think you might have already shared it uh, uh, in the group by way of uh, notes and other things now. No, this I will share, sir. Whatever yeah, I have yeah. prepared, I have uh, prepared a note, a small, small one a bullet points. I will uh, share in the group, sir. Yeah, that is that is better because uh, there are possibilities are there. Uh, some questions, uh, MCQs will come based on this. What is margin of safety or what is break even point? He has asked one a simple question. What is break even point? It is no profit, no loss point. The total cost when it equals to total uh, sales, so then there is no profit and no loss. That is the point in which the uh, the unit is said to be in break even. So those types of uh, questions may, uh, may be asked in the examination. Very important. Each and every sentence is important. I think already a detailed uh, PPT has been shared by you, Rindar, sir, in our group. You have to go through, all of you, you once again, you go through it. You prepare a bullet point based on that uh, PPT. So that uh, from uh, uh, from examination point of view, it is most important. You can read it before going to the examination hall. It will be beneficial for you. Any other notes you want to clarify under credit management? Yeah. One question was there, uh, what, is, what are the seven C's in credit capital? Seven C's. Uh, seven C's, that is the character. Uh, first one is actually uh, <clears throat> character. Most important part is character. Whatever's character is most important. 
then uh, character uh, capacity whether he is having the capacity to run the business whether he is having the capability to uh, do it on a continuous basis then he should have sufficient capital to start the uh, business then uh, he should uh, bring sufficient collateral for that particular loan he should have proper control over the particular venture and uh, condition uh, conditions yeah, exactly condition condition these are all the seven c's we can uh, say character capacity capability capital collateral credit worthiness condition seven c's any other doubt anybody is having on uh, credit uh, related sir sir I have... Moin Malayathan sir, I have prepared just the bullet points covering almost uh, entire portions. I will uh, share to you. Just go uh, see that if it is uh, what the sharing, it can be shared, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Please share, sir. Okay. Main points only. It is not a lengthy one. So, uh, but I have covered almost entire portion. One one word like 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 that. <laughs> Any doubt uh, anybody is having, uh, you can uh, please ask on uh, credit management. One person uh, privately uh, given a message. Once again, sir, could you please explain the LC EOQ calculation? <laughs> okay, anyway, I will take five minutes uh, because I initially I have explained you without any screen. So I am explaining it further. With the help of a screen, you can just go through this. This is the question which I have shared in the uh, first initial uh, hours of this session. The question is like this, the annual consumption, the annual consumption of raw material, raw material for a particular unit is 15 lakhs. Fifteen lakhs. And the economic order quantity, economic order quantity. That is the minimum quantity which the unit has to place an order. Below this below this level, the unit cannot uh, place any orders. So this is the minimum level of order, 2.50. And the period, the total usance period, usance period allowed by the seller. And that we can see is ninety days. Need time is estimated thirty days. Now with this. This may be the question. You have to find out what is the LC limit that can be fixed for this particular problem. There are three steps involved for finding out the solution. Number one is you have to find out number of LCs. Number of LCs required, required for the unit of the entire year. This can be calculated like this because economic order quantity is 2.50 lakh. The total amount of raw material consumption is estimated at 15 lakhs. That means 15 lakh divided by 2.50 lakh, you will get 6 LCs. 6 LCs are required in a year. With the 6 LCs, each LC is costing 2.50 lakhs. So that if you open 6 LCs in a year, total 15 lakh worth of raw material can be imported or can be purchased from the seller. Now the second one is you have to find out the frequency of the LC. Frequency of the LC. Frequency of the LC, LC how you can uh, calculate it. Total number of months in a year is 12. There are 12 months in a year divided by first, uh, the resultant figure of the first, uh, first point. That is six LCs are required in a year. That means uh, in 12 months uh, period, six LCs will be opened. 12 months divided by 6 cells. You will get once in 2 months. Once in 2 months, the banker has to open LC for the customer. Number third one is 
after taking into account the total nuisance period and lead time, how many LCs will be outstanding at any one given point of time? How many LCs? Outstanding at any given time. This we can find out by doing the, this formula. That is the total lead time is 90 days plus 30 days. That is almost four months. So four months divided by frequency of the LC. Four months divided by two months. <clears throat> you will get two. Two LCs are required. That is, the LC limit should be equivalent of two LCs. So one LC you may be knowing because there is economic order quantity, one LC will be equal to 2.50 lakhs. So for two LCs, two into 2.50 lakhs equals 5 lakhs. So 5 lakhs is our answer. This is the answer. Now it is clear now. Somebody asked this question. Right? <laughs> Any doubt in this? Hello. Yes, tell me. Yes, sir. Last one, four point, what is this? Last one is the number of LCs, LC limit, total number of LCs outstanding at any given point of time. That total number it. of LC outstanding given at the point of time, correct? Na? Exactly. That is last point you want to elaborate further, no? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Definitely. Yes, sir. LC limit. You. LC limit. So, 5x is the LC. This is the FLC limit. Okay. 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 Thank you. Now, now I am removing, I am removing this EOQ. If there is no EOQ, then what will be the answer? If there is no EOQ in this question, what will be the answer? If there is no EOQ, there are only two steps involved. These three steps will not be there. 2.5 steps. Five. Only two steps. Number one, monthly consumption, monthly estimated consumption. Consumption equals fifteen lakh divided by one. How much it will come? 15 lakh 25,000. 1.25 lakh, is it not? Number two, total period 90 plus 30 lakh. Total four months. Frequency. Four into four into one point two five. The two is how much? Five lakhs. Here the same answer is we are getting, but sometimes it may vary because here the total period taken is four months. That is why same answer we got. Otherwise it will be four months into one point two five lakhs. Five lakh worth of uh, LC limit is required for this. Because there is a use and that is why. First LC will be expired only after four months. So each and every month, 1.25 worth of LC to be opened. At the end of four months, uh, the total LC will outstanding will come to five lakhs. It's very hard to do. Suppose I am amending slightly here. Instead of 90 days. Now I am amending it to five months. Then what will be the answer? This will change, is it not? This will be changed to a new figure that is total period of LC will be six months. So limit will be six into one point two. Six into one point five. One point five, sir. One point. One point five zero nine. 
7.5. So now it is 7.5. Now I am inputting that economic order quantity again. Economic order quantity. Now you tell me what is the answer. First thing. So now you remember in the, this method 7.5 is the answer we got. Now we will go for three steps again. Number of x's 15 divided by 2. And <clears throat> this 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 7.5 sir. Total period of how much? Total period is 5 plus 1, 7 months, 6 months. 6 divided by 3. Equals 3 x. Again, 4.5 is done. 6 divided by 3. 3 x. Okay, anyway, same answer we got, but sometimes it will vary, depends upon the period uh, and other thing, it will vary, because economic order quantity, we have to put at least for this uh, same amount, 2.5 lakhs, like, we cannot reduce it to 2.5 lakhs, like. okay, why I am saying like this, you see, suppose here you are getting 3.25 LCs like that, then you have to fix LC limit at instead of 3.2, you cannot take 3.2 for LC. Either you, can, you have to take 3 or 4. Here, the better way is you have to take the higher limit, 4 LC, 4 into 2.5. But in the case of the, the, the other one, without the economic order quantity, you can straight away take that 3.2 by as it is. That is the big man. So in those cases, the difference will come. Fraction will not work in EOQ. Whenever the third uh, step, the, some fraction is coming, you have to round it off to the next higher value. Whatever may be the fraction. Sometimes it may be 0, 3.25 like this, sometimes 3.75. So if at all it is 3.20, 3.25, 3.5, 3.75, you have to round it off to the next higher value 4. Then you have to multiply it with the economic order part. Clear? There was a question on uh, four, four types of uh, cash flows. The first one, definitely, it is the cash flow from the operation. That is the main thing. Whatever trading, sales, and other thing you are doing, whatever uh, you are getting uh, the cash uh, flow from that operation, that is the main thing. Second one is from the investment. So purchase of the capital assets and investment in other companies, whatever you are doing. So that is the second one, investing uh, cash flow, investment operations. Third one is from the financing. Whatever loan you are taking, that uh, you are issuing, equity you are getting, that, that is the third uh, source of uh, cash flows. The last one is the free cash flow, that is from your profit, whatever you are making. These are the four cash flows. Operations, investment, finance, and the profit. And uh, you have to remember uh, this um, uh, depreciation is also cash profit. Gobi, uh, raise the hand. Anything to ask? Please. Nobody is asking any doubt from the priority sector. Why? Priority sector is very important, but nobody is asking any doubt on that. Everybody is thorough. <laughs> Sir, uh, perpetually is coming under tier one capital. That is additional tier one. It is known as additional tier one, not directly in the common equity tier one. The tier one is uh, actually bifurcated into two: common equity tier one and additional tier one. So it is coming under the additional tier one. Sir, this is a uh, recollected question. Ah. Since you asked about tier one, mm -hmm. somebody can give the answer. Participants can give the answer. 
As per RB guidelines on domestic scheduled commercial banks and foreign banks, 20 brands and above in India are required to uh, achieve minimum. B, B sir. B. B. B, B, sir. B, sir. B. D, sir. Okay. Okay. D for Bombay or D for Delhi? D Delhi, D sir. D Delhi, sir. D for okay. Delhi, sir. So, they are thorough with the uh, priority sector, it seems. <laughs> sir, priority sector, uh, there yeah. are two varieties for uh, non-institutional lenders, no, sir. One, farmers and other is other borrowers. One, uh, one lakh and no limit, say, You are saying about uh, agriculturist, priority sector agriculturist? Uh, yes, sir. Ah, Agriculture is, is a, no F, limit, sir. FPO, that is a farmers produce organizations, farmers produce cooperatives, that you are asking? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Not okay. to non-institutional lenders, sir. Ah, non-institutional lenders. So, actually, this um, uh, priority sector, so this uh, warehouse uh, receipts uh, we can give for 50 lakhs, uh, that is uh, non-institutional, and maximum period is 12 months. And latest, there is a change that is uh, the electronic uh, negotiable uh, warehouse receipts, which is controlled by WDRA, Warehouse Development Regulatory Authority. So there you can give up to 75 lakhs. But uh, sir, whether uh, this uh, their cutoff is uh, June 30th or last year, uh, December 31st? December 30th. December 30th. December, last year only. So, yes. so this uh, electronic, uh, this negotiable warehousing receipt, it has come uh, 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 last uh, uh, May or so. So that is not applicable. Okay. Then uh, for this uh, farmers, whatever loan given to the small and marginal farmers, small farmer is uh, those who are having a uh, above one one hectare to land holding of above one hectare to two hectare, and uh, uh, marginal farmer is those who are having up to one hectare. So there. Uh, uh, it is uh, whatever loan given to them, it is covered under agriculture and allied activities, even though they are uh, not uh, having any uh, land, uh, but they are wholly dependent on allied activities up to two lakhs. That is also included under the small and marginal farmers. Institutional farmers, uh, if you uh, uh, take that uh, food and agro, it is uh, 100 crores. Startups, it is 50 crores. Agriculture infra, it is uh, 100 crores from the entire banking system. And uh, for uh, FBOs, uh, these farmers produce organizations and farmers produce uh, cooperatives directly engaged in agriculture, it is two crores. And if there is already a tie up, Adanis and Ambanis, they want already tied at the, this rate, we, will, we are going to purchase, already there is a tie up, then up to five crores, it can be given. These are about uh, uh, this uh, farmers and uh, institutional and non-institutional. One question uh, relating to documentation. One of the participants can answer. Date of execution documents should never be dashed the date of stamping and the document should be filled in as they are signed. Later than after, after, before, earlier than before, later than before. Earlier than. Si, sí, sir. Should never be. After stamping only, we have to execute the documents, no, sir? Uh, execution yes, sir. is, what is execution? First, let us see what is execution. Execution is signing, signing, signing the documents by the executor. That is the execution. Execution stamping should be either before execution or at the time of execution. It cannot be after signing, you cannot put the stamping. So, uh, uh, date of uh, execution of the document should always be, always be, I have already told. Here the question is, should never be. So, first you uh, uh, put the stamp, then you execute. Execution can be either before or at the time. It cannot be after. Yes, sir. So, what is the answer for this? Date of execution of document should never be. See. No, here it is a date. Date. Date when you will be. So always you put the date before giving the loan. So you have to first you have to execute the document, then only you have to give the loan. Okay.
you don't say a b c d later than after so only okay. two three words are there no why you are so much nice that is here they have earlier than should see. never that word is most important should never see this is very important sir i told you sir earlier than very yeah very good correct see uh, should never sometimes in some question tag two negatives will come then the answer will be positive if it is negative tag then you have to go for that should never like that never is a negative tag so it is a twisting question within a fraction of a minute or this thing you have to decide you have to concentrate in the reading this particular question when you have to first you have to analyze execution of document you have to analyze yourself when it has to sanding when it has to happen before execution or at the time of execution it should not be after execution so that should be in your mind then only you can answer it clearly good so execution should not be should never be the earlier than and before yeah that is stamping should happen either at the time of execution or before execution so never is uh, giving a negative meaning opposite meaning so c is the correct answer any other question any 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 doubt you are having on any portion sir credit management you can definitely ask sir confirming bank negotiating bank and reimbursing bank sir reimbursing okay mohan valya than sir is there sir can tell yeah 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 he can, <laughs> yeah, he can. <laughs> confirming bank negotiating bank and reimbursing reimbursing bank so first i will tell negotiating bank negotiating bank means it is exporter's bank or beneficiary's bank actually that bank is parting with the money to the exporter negotiation means it is a kind of finance given by the exporter's bank so negotiation means the bank exporter's bank is releasing the money against the documents okay negotiating bank whether it is clear yes sir then uh, reimbursing bank see once negotiated that bank should get the money back from somebody so in the lc itself the opening bank will clearly state where the fund is made available the cover fund will will available with so and so bank that will be mentioned in the lc by the opening bank so there the opening bank will be uh, keeping the required fund so that bank who is reimbursing the money to the negotiating bank is known as the reimbursing bank and reimbursing bank always will be a correspondent bank of opening bank clear clear sir so confirming bank in all the lcs uh, confirming bank may not be there the when the uh, exporter doubt about the opening bank having some doubt in the opening bank and all then they will he will demand for another bank to come into the picture to confirm so that double confirmation is getting that the amount will be paid so if any bank other than opening bank they are confirming the lc that bank is known as confirmed lc and that bank is known as confirming bank and actually that bank is taking additional liability on the lc so it, there there can be always advising bank who is advising the lc to the exporter where they are not taking any additional liability but in the case of confirming bank the confirming bank is taking additional liability on the lc okay clear sir uh, yes sir sir sometimes the exporter uh, can avail uh, the amount immediately na sir immediately means uh, from the negotiating bank then it will be fi financing sir the exporter uh, after shipment the bill is ready he can go to his bank and get the money okay after shipment only he can uh, negotiate the documents that is immediately 
immediately after the shipment only otherwise before shipment he can go to the bank and uh, avail a credit facility that is packing credit or pre shipment credit we call it if the borrower exporter is already having a credit facility with his bank he can avail packing credit from his bank otherwise if it is mentioned in the uh, a red clause so he can avail based on that uh, guarantee given by the issuing bank he can avail so actually what exactly is your doubt uh, can you is it clear to you sir clear sir clear sir okay so any other doubt Sir, Hello. Reimbursing bank and reimbursing bank will be same. Will be same. Uh, madam, it is not that much clear. Reimbursing bank and the and negotiating bank, sir. Okay. Reimbursing bank and negotiating bank, sir. Maybe, maybe. Sometimes they, both banks will be the same bank. There is no hard and fast rule. Sometimes three banks will be the same bank. Confirm. And reimbursing bank also bank. can be same. Yeah. Bank same. All banks can be same. Be same. All same. the banks. See, suppose. standard charter london is opening an lc and uh, that uh, beneficiary is maintaining an account with the standard chartered bank uh, uh, cochin and uh, the cover fund is available with the standard chartered bank uh, new york so this opening bank the negotiating bank reimbursing bank all are standard chartered bank same bank can be there. okay sir thank you sir so, hello uh, yes sir can you explain the para banking activities and the conversion of debt to equity share during restructuring the para banking activities nothing but the activity those activity which are not permitted by reserve bank of india for banks to perform just like venture capital or venture fund business or even any other type of business other than a normal banking other than ancillary business Ancillary oh. business means uh, safe deposit vault, safe custody of uh, articles, and the government business, agency, NFT transaction. Those are uh, normal transactions. Other than that, whenever a bank is supposed to do some extra activity, it has okay. to get permission from the Reserve Bank of India. It is permitted by the Reserve Bank of India under Section Six or Section One of uh, our DR Act. So the banks can do those type of uh, uh, banking activities. It is parallel to the banking. in addition to getting revenue from uh, the traditional way of banking banks okay. are getting revenue from other sources also non interest income okay so that is known as para bank another question what is your another question okay another one is the conversion of debt to equity that is at the time of restructuring you are asking is it not yes yes under the restructuring process sir yeah restructuring process normally what the bank will do bank will give additional finance to the particular borrower is it not it will come under big uh, consortium rules and multiple yes yeah. yes whenever this restructuring is happening the bank will take a certain portion of that debt that equity that will be converted into uh, the, uh, in the form of debt is it okay not? okay now so the bank will get a revenue because bank is funding additional funding the bank is giving So yes, the bank sir. should have an upper hand on that till okay. the unit is becoming viable. After that, the bank will release everything. Okay, okay. That Fine, is only sir. a package. It is one of the one among the package of the restructuring program. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. okay. So Thank you, one, sir. One more package, as yes. uh, Sir was telling. One more package, and that is uh, sanctioning a five TL. That is a funded interest term loan. What is funded interest term loan? Suppose the borrower before the uh, restructuring means there was some problem, financial stress. That is why restructuring is happening. So the yes. customer has not paid the interest. Pay, uh, interest he was not able to service it. So okay. that interest portion can be converted into a term loan. in that case it will be called a fitl fund at interest term loan that interest whatever not paid it can be paid over a period of time as a term loan installment yes okay okay, okay. thank you sir thank you you might have seen this in the covid packages yes yes yes, yes sir yes, yes, sir. yes sir. most of the accounts we have done it like that okay if any more question is there we are happy only to clear otherwise we can uh, stop it if any doubt is there you can ask Sir, uh, sir, regarding NRA account, sir, in uh, okay, sir, we we need not remember uh, uh, IT Act, sir. Only FEMA we have to take care, sir. See, NRA account 
when we are opening nre account the definition of nre we will take pema definition only the uh, nre as per income tax when this non resident indian is filing the income tax return then he have to go by that income tax rule okay hello that is clear yes sir okay so any other question from bfm also you can ask no problem sir i sir basic difference between nre and nro sir nre and nro this non resident external account that all the fund that should come from abroad now rbi has permitted local credits also can be uh, local uh, local income like the rent uh, pension uh, dividend interest also can be credited to nre account provided that interest has uh, that uh, tax has been paid for that amount so the basic difference is that you see in the case of nre 100 percentage repatriation is permitted whatever amount is there in nre 100 percentage the person can take it back to the foreign country whereas in the case of nro the maximum only 1 million dollar can be taken back or taken over to abroad and that too after paying the tax nre sir, there is no tax in nro uh, for interest we are uh, they, that uh, it is taxable nro interest is taxable nre it is no not taxable sir nre means money earned externally abroad yes. Yes. NRO means earned in India. We we can uh, credit to the account. Yes. Sir, but uh, uh, suppose foreign tourist, uh, in case of foreign tourist, sir, why they are uh, given NRO account, sir, instead of NRE? That is a see. Uh, they are not uh, uh, resident Indian now. So they are coming from abroad for a specific purpose for a short period of time. Okay. so rb has not given the non resident external non resident status to them so they came here for a short period and as per rbi rbi directive we can open only non resident ordinary account only in the name of foreign tourists and those who uh, foreign nationals coming for studies here whereas in the case of any foreign national coming into india for employment then we the rb is our income tax purposes he is treated as a resident and he can open account a resident account just like our account no nre no nro his account will be a resident account normally valitan i will cite one example for this the nre nro most of the students they are not having exact picture what exactly because in kerala we are familiar with it in some other areas in our country no they are not familiar with it so i will cite one example just suppose you imagine one auto rickshaw driver who is maintaining a bsbd account in your branch tomorrow he is proceeding to dubai for an employment normally what he will do he will after going uh, after reaching dubai he will open ask you to open another account for sending money from abroad uh, that uh, he will uh, normally the banker will suggest an nre account for uh, sending money from uh, dubai and simultaneously already he was maintaining an account is it not now still the account is there he is still maintaining that account the domestic account existing domestic account will be converted into it now that means a person who is going uh, proceeding abroad he cannot uh, maintain a domestic account in india his existing domestic account will be treated as now so a person of non a non resident indian he can maintain either nre or nro or both But he is not supposed to maintain a domestic normal account, just like you and me. We are maintaining it. This is the case. Yes, correct. The when a when a resident is becoming non-resident, he cannot uh, continue his resident account. That is to be converted into non-resident or another account. Any other question? FCNR account regarding FCNR account. Uh, a resident, non-resident Indian, after becoming a resident Indian, uh, will that F C N R account uh, automatically converted into uh, resident? Uh, uh, as per R B A directive, when a non-resident, uh, non uh, non-resident Indian N R I is coming back, only F C N R account can remain till the maturity date. 
NRA account immediately you have to convert into resident account. NRA immediately you have to convert into resident account. FCNR, RBI has permitted that it can run till the maturity date. After the maturity date only, it needs to be converted into uh, resident account. Okay. What about NRAFD? NRAFD account? NRAFD also to be converted into resident account. As per RBI directive, all accounts other than FCNR. FCNR only can be continued till the maturity. That will immediately. Earlier it was 90 days time was there. Now, now it is immediately you have to convert it into residence account. Any other question? Yes, sir. Uh, one more question is there. Uh, can you uh, differentiate exactly consortium loan, multiple banking arrangement and sy loan syndication? That already Basically, has been explained. Yeah, already explained. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If so you want to share it. Yeah, and also this uh, this has, this is in YouTube channel and this link will be shared. You can okay. uh, watch it tomorrow again. No problem. You can, you can watch it. Yeah, in the related. multiple banking, there is no formal agreement between the uh, bankers. But whereas okay. in the consortium, there is a formal inter se agreement between all the bankers. And uh, in the case of consortium, sir has given all the main points. It is arranged by a person, arranged by a banker. So he can uh, take a part of the loan or he can be only arranger also. But in the case of consortium, the uh, bank which is having the maximum the loan, they will be the normally the lead bank. In para bank, the multiple banking, there is no arrangement at all. Only the customer goes to different banks and take a loan from term loan from one bank, cash credit from another bank, bill discounting from another bank, like that. It is up to him. There, the problem is there is a chance of over financing. Each bank they are not uh, seeing what is the actual requirement. Each bank is doing according to whatever requirement he has projected. There is a chance of over financing. But uh, consortium entire thing will be seen by the lead bank. They will be processing everything. So other things are as given all the main points uh, difference. Okay. Loan syndication, sir. One uh, loan syndication in uh, loan syndication, uh, the property will be separate in consortium. With the one property is there for multiple bankers. In the multiple bank, a different property uh, borrower will give. But in uh, loan syndication, same, same, and as a consortium, see, loan syndication, also, who is making all the arrangements? Only the suppose normally loan syndication where it is taken in the case of project loan and other thing where huge fund is required. There will yes. be one only one security. If the, each okay. bank will not get a separate security. All okay. there is a common syndication uh, uh, documents, loan document is there. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Out of our probability problem. Oh, <laughs> you can uh, purposely uh, very sorry that Sarah has left, uh, and uh, you can watch this. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes. Did you will be providing you uh, the link so that we can again go through it? Uh, it will be explained there. Okay. Or in the WhatsApp, also you can put no problem. But okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. It was, okay, sir. It was discussed in detail. Uh, yeah. uh, the probability problem discussed in detail by Parvesh sir. That will be available in the site. You can go through that. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, whether we are uh, including this FCNR deposit in the M1, M2, M3, M4 in the economics, measures of money supply, this classification, no M1, M2, M3, M4. Yeah, so, yeah. This, uh, uh, just like NRE deposit only. So, uh, how we are treating NRE like that, FCNR also to be treated. And that is a, in M3, we are including the time deposit with commercial banks. Sir. So yes. the FCNR and NRA deposits are considered over there. Yeah. M oh, okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Sir, uh, sir in uh, business sir. mathematics, sir, um, sir, how many problem questions can we expect, month. sir? Out of 25 marks. Sir, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, that uh, how many questions I will come later. Uh, regarding topic, uh, somebody want to ask something, please. Uh, sir, is packing credit is a part of pre-shipment uh, uh, credit or both the same, sir? Packing credit and PCL is one and the same. Okay. You, either it, you call it as packing credit or pre-shipment finance. 
packing credit limit PCL, packing credit or uh, pre-shipment finance, everything one and the same. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, regarding the questions, see, uh, uh, in, B, uh, in CAB, unlike JIB, there will be uh, numerical based, then uh, uh, one paragraph based questions, more will be there here in CAB, whether it is ABM or BFM or retail banking. Minimum 40 marks, 40 to 45. Whereas in the case of JIB, almost all the questions are independent. Whereas here in this uh, ABM, for example, from credit management, they will be giving the data of a balance sheet of a company. Then they will be, uh, you will be asked to uh, solve some, uh, uh, find out net worth or debt equity ratio or uh, what you call current ratio, like that question can be asked. And uh, from uh, this uh, business mathematics also, that the data will be given and three, four questions can be asked. From bond valuation, that same thing can be happened. So here, in for CIB, minimum uh, 40, 40 mark questions, 40, 45 mark questions will be case study based or paragraph based or numerical based. Okay. So for uh, minimum eight or nine marks from uh, each topic will be 10 marks you can expect from uh, case study or uh, this market problem from each topic, each unit. Sir, but uh, business mathematics uh, mostly problems, no, sir? Yeah, theory also can be there, but in the in, uh, individual uh, uh, problems, uh, numerical questions also will be asked. One-liner questions will be asked. Okay, any other doubt? If any other question? Sir, one, one example for the CRR calculation, sir. CRR calculation, actually, uh, that economics, uh, uh, madam, is not there right now. Uh, so, uh, you can uh, uh, put in the WhatsApp group and uh, we'll get it uh, done by our uh, faculty. Any other question? So now almost now it is uh, uh, reaching seven o'clock. So once again, I am wishing all the very best to all of you. Thank you, sir. So uh, as I told earlier, be confident. First half an hour, you attend questions which are hundred percent sure for you, and also one liner only. Big questions you attend second time. That is after thirty minutes, you come back again and. Uh, uh, attend uh, these questions. What is that? Is lengthy questions you attend in the second round. So one hour 40, 45 minutes you will be in a position to answer minimum 65 to 70, 75 questions. 20, 10 to 20 questions anyway it will be very very difficult, which uh, uh, you may be uh, seeing for the first time. So such questions you can just uh, uh, wild guess you can go for and uh, you can answer like that. So uh, the confidence level of you is very important. Uh, you can boost your confidence level in the first half an hour if you answer only the questions which you know. If you can answer 25 to 30 questions in 30 minutes out of 1 to 100, then definitely you are going to score minimum 60 marks. So take it from me like that and uh, wishing all the very best from IBS side. Uh, uh, again, be confident. Do well and come out successful. Best wishes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All the best. All the best. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Best wishes to all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Your MCQs are very helpful, sir. Okay, thank you. Since it is going on live, I think, Biju, we can stop it right now. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ravitendra, sir.